What Happens in the Woods is a true crime podcast. We discuss events that are often violent in nature. Listener's discretion is advised. Hey friends, welcome back to everyone's favourite episodes. This is the Notorious What the Fuck Wednesday This is where we discuss cases and crimes that make you say, what the fuck? To help me get through this fuckery, I have Mara and Olivia back with me. Hello. What's up? (laughs) You you look like you were like, (laughs) I don't know. Do I talk? When do I talk? I don't know. All right. So I've been like dying to say fuckery for months now. I'm not going to lie. Why? Because it's the best word ever. Exactly. Exactly. As Amy Winehouse once said. Yes. Yes. All right. So technically the podcast is in its off season, but this was, I don't know, popular, wildly popular. So of course we had to bring it back. So this week is actually a pretty special week for the little podcast. We are celebrating one whole fucking year of doing the podcast on the 21st. Wow. I know. So you get some extra episodes this week. We have a part one on Saturday and a part two on Sunday. We're doing a recap of our first two seasons and we're going to answer some questions of, you know, just things that you guys want to know about the podcast. And of course, you get this first episode of what the fuckery. So. I just want to say again, like the amount of support that we've gotten, I think we're a broken record by now because we're always kind of like, oh my God, you guys were just so amazed and it's been crazy, but we really can't thank everybody enough. So as a thank you, we're going to be doing a giveaway. So listen to both episodes this weekend and you guys will get the instructions to enter that. So... We shouldn't have to say it at this point, but I just want to reiterate the podcast is for mature audiences and some of the things we're going to discuss are violent and they can be triggering. So please listen responsibly. Okay, that's all out of the it's done. Are we ready? I don't know. (laughs) Are you scared? (laughs) I need your mommy. I need my mommy. (laughs) All right. So (laughs) this first story we have is out of Florida. Of course it is. It's always out of Florida. This is the only Florida I'm doing. This is it. I'm not doing another fucking Florida story. You guys don't get any more attention. I can't. It's but this one was too good. Too good to pass up. So this happened back in November of twenty eighteen in Nasa Nassau. How do you say that? Nassau? Um, yeah, it's out of Florida. Uh that's Kenneth, all you need to know. Right. Kenneth Crumpton was booked on charges that he allegedly stabbed a woman in the head with a fork. Oh, my God. What the hell? (laughs) No, what the fuck? Sorry. It sounds like this took place like in a residence. It wasn't kind of clear. So I'm I'm kind of I was thinking that they lived together and this was around Thanksgiving time. So maybe you know what I'm thankful for. (laughs) Right. Forks. My my fork (laughs) in your head. Um. So the two were fighting over all things a baked potato. Oh, my that's serious. Gosh. I will fight you over a baked potato. Kenneth thought that it just wasn't cooked enough. Oh. It, it just it wasn't right. So his response to the under, undercooked potato was to take a fork and stab her, stab this woman. OK, that's in just, the head that's multiple times. I was thinking we were fighting over like who gets the last potato. No, but if you're, yeah, I'm not going to stab you if you undercook the potato. That's a bit much. He apparently he was like, "Look, the potato's undercooked. I can't fork it. Let me show you because I can't. Let fork me show your you how to either. fork it, right?" So oh, no. <laughs> his retelling of things is that he just threw it at her head and it grazed her head. But when authorities show up. She's got multiple stab wounds on her forehead and there's blood everywhere. The amount of strength that you have to have in order right? to stab somebody with a fork on your forehead. On your forehead. That's Officer, sorry. I just right? I tripped and I fell into her with the fork. Multiple times. Five times. <laughs> yes. So authorities show up and you know they're they're like, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> Um, but she refused medical treatment. 
So, what? yeah, I don't know. 36 year old Kenneth was charged with aggravated battery with a deadly weapon. <laughs> Forks that fork. are deadly. Um, and bail was set for $25,000. Oh my God. What? They really took this fucking serious. <laughs> they were like, no, we're going to stop this right here. Don't ever do this again. We're going to make an example out of you. If you value your life, don't argue about potatoes. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so there was a date set of December of that year. So 2018 for sentencing, but I, I can't access the record. So I don't know what he actually ended up with. So yeah, he's a hardened criminal in prison now. He's a hardened criminal now. Like that's honestly like battery with a deadly weapon. I had no idea. What are you in for, buddy? Stab my lady with a fork. (laughs) You monster. (laughs) (laughs) She didn't fucking cook my potato right. I had to teach that bitch a lesson. Man, don't don't fuck with him. If if you got a a fork anywhere near you. Run. Well, like, can you imagine, like, the shivs that he's going to make? <laughs> oh, my God. Obviously, he's got a stabbing problem. I'm, <laughs> I'm just I saying. wonder if it was just like, oh, it's fork. A- or he's like, ah, I want the fork. It's Maybe. a gateway weapon. <laughs> <laughs> start out with forks. And then you just get bigger. Sure. I mean, we everybody's got a starting point. I guess. <laughs> I, mean, I guess. Yeah. A baked potato. Baked potato. Yeah. You know, it, some of these people, you just, you can't fuck with their food. Uh, I, it's, it's very I triggering. I'm one of those people. I know you're one of those. We I all mean, know this. Yes, but like. I also have never feared for my life that you're going <laughs> to stab me with a utensil if you didn't get your food right. I will not stab you with a utensil. I'll yell at you. That's about it. There might be some mean words in there. Yeah. Yeah. And then you both would like turn around and be like, I'm sorry, mom. I'm sorry. I didn't mean, <laughs> I didn't mean it. <laughs> Please don't beat my ass. <laughs> Please don't get the fork. If anybody's stabbing anybody in this scenario, it's probably me, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, you freaking Scorpio. Yeah, I I do have a mean streak. Uh, oh, well. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. We're uh, moving on. <laughs> we all have our problems and crosses to bear in life. All right. So there you go. There's the obligatory Florida fuckery and we can get it on and it's done and we don't have to talk about it again. All right, so our next fuckery news comes out of Virginia. And this is one of those stories where you really wonder, like, what is wrong with people? But it, you also don't know, like, the lengths of, like, what people are willing to go to to, to do something. So kind of a sad one. Um, this one is dubbed the selfie killer by the media. So because this killer would go on to share a photo of her crime with the world on Instagram, as well as send it to a true crime blogger before she was caught, is, I don't understand why you would do that. I don't. Attention. Confusion. There's, yeah, there are definitely some issues here. So young couple Rex and Amanda Taylor were childhood sweethearts. They were married um, young. They eventually had two children. At the time of all of this, the kids were like un- both under five. So they were really into true crime, but the more gory and horror kind of crime. And sadly, their lives were turned upside down due to Rex having a very strong addiction to op- um, very strong addiction to opioids. What is even more sad is his own father is the one that enabled the addiction, like got him hooked. Oh, no. Yeah. So despite like several times of him trying trying to like get rid of his addiction and Amanda was really trying to help him be- to get clean, it just it never happened. So the two separated and Rex moved in with his father, which just further enabled <laughs> him really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, literally like the worst thing that you could do. So in late 2014, Rex actually committed suicide by hanging himself in his dad's garage. And it's it's super sad. Um, Amanda, at that point, just, I I think, like, something switched and she flipped out. So she did what she thought she had to do and she killed her father-in-law. Oh. Yeah. Um, She had help from this guy that she knew. She, like, had friend-zoned him, obviously. (laughs) Um, he had access to weapons and she wanted weapons. So, uh, she had, she friend zoned him, but he really was like, had romantic feelings for her. Um, I'll kill a person for you. (laughs) His name is Sean Ball. 
he offered to make her dreams, you know, come true. (laughs) She had a dream of becoming a serial killer. And what the fuck kind of dream is that? (laughs) I, this is why it's fuckery. I don't know. But you think about it, romanticizing serial killers, it's not new. People do it with like Bundy and BTK and. Dude, people were doing it with the Night Stalker. Yeah. When that just came out, it was pissing me off. No, it was like, it's sick. Like they'd be sitting in the courtrooms and just be like, oh, hey, hey, I got your attention. You want to wink, wink, nudge, no judge? I, I don't know. Um, yeah. So it's it's odd, but it's it's there. It happens. So they decided to put this plan into action on April 4th, 2015. The two headed over to her father-in-law's house. They proceeded to murder him. Amanda stabbed him 31 times with a fucking bayonet. A bayonet. Bayonet. Okay. Um, Sean bludgeoned him with a tire iron until oh. he was dead. Yeah. That's so sad. Yeah. I mean, it is. I, I'm not saying that the guy didn't deserve something. I just... I, I don't, don't think, think he deserved, deserved to, to die. Bludgeoned not with that. a tire iron. Yeah. So then she took a selfie <laughs> with... The body. But first, nice. let me take yeah. a selfie. Um, she took a Did she selfie. write that song? Maybe. Maybe. She had the murder weapon that was like covered in flesh, fresh blood and the body of her father-in-law slumped over the couch in the background. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, and it so, had her face in it? Yeah, she took a selfie. This is what kills me is that people do that and they incriminate themselves by taking photos and just posting them. Right. Or not even not right. posting them, but you're going to take a picture of yourself at a crime scene with the weapon. I think she, I, but to be honest with you, I don't think she was trying to hide. Hashtag blessed. <laughs> Stop. Oh my God. I just want to know like, what the, what the hell was we the all laughed. caption? That's fucked up. The caption. Like, I don't know. What do you even say to that? I don't. Well, I'll tell you. Just killed the body. Hold up, though. Oh. Uh, So she shares it. She shares it on Instagram. She posted this and then sent it to a blogger who was not named for you know secrecy purposes to keep this person safe. Um, She went on to go onto Instagram and share more photos of other things. One of which was a photo of her sitting in the car. You could see see the steering wheel. And in her lap, she has a gun. And the caption for that is, quote, all right, it's about that time. I'm going to go find my husband in hell and finally be at peace. Uh, and there were people who like who liked the photo. Like it had, you know, the heart. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, the the heart that was you could see that people had liked it. Yeah. And it sparked like controversy. People were commenting on it and going back and forth. And it was crazy. So the blogger reported the contact and the photo immediately, as you do, to the police. And Amanda was like in constant contact with this blogger, trying to get this person, whoever they are, to uh, put the photos up on their blog and do like an article, do a blog post (laughs) over her. Did she like try and contact any other bloggers or was it just this one? Just this one. (laughs) Yeah. So authorities catch up with Amanda while she's actually on the phone with the blogger because she kept in contact with this person over a few, like a couple of days. I think it was only maybe a 24 hour period. And she and Sean actually made it to from Virginia to Tennessee. But then she wanted Sean to help her kill again. And at this point, he's kind of like, I don't know about that. I'm going <laughs> to That's where you draw the I'm going to yeah, I'm going to hold off cuz they had come across a couple of girls like young ladies that were traveling. And she's like, "Oh, I want you to help me murder these ones." And he was kind of like, "Yeah, I think I'm going to have to just stop right there. Thank you very much." <laughs> oh. So she didn't like that. So she ended oh. up um shooting him <gasps> in the face and oh. leaving him for dead on the <gasps> side of the road after she took a sh- selfie of that. Yeah. Um, girl. so Miss Girl, sh- he's really, yeah. Um, but he didn't die, he actually didn't oh, die. That's good. Well, he's in jail. Oh, well, that that's not yeah. good, but yeah, but he's alive. 
Uh, he actually made a recovery. He's convicted of second degree murder in 2016, and he is currently serving 60 years for his part in the crime that they committed oh my against gosh, her father. Yeah. This guy I mean, was just in love. Yeah, you know, love makes you do stupid shit. The ultimate simp. <laughs> <laughs> So our friend Amanda was sentenced to life in prison on charges of first degree murder. Uh, She was sentenced in 2015. So before him, I have a feeling they let him get recovered, like recouped enough before they were like, oh, but by the way, you got to go to jail. Um, She pled not guilty. What the fuck? (laughs) Girl, Miss Girl. (laughs) Um, But she admitted to the murder and she clearly stated that she would have done more. But I'm not guilty or anything. <laughs> but I'm not guilty. What? Don't find me guilty. Okay. I did the crime. I took the pictures. I posted them. Right. But I didn't do it. Right. I would have done more. I would have done more. I would have liked to have accomplished more. But but guilty? <laughs> no. <laughs> me? Never. <laughs> what? So really sad. I I have a feeling she just kind of went mentally and crazy. She you probably know, she did. She mentally yeah. like, had a snap. When her husband died, when her husband committed suicide. Uh, yeah. But, uh, and that's, she, that's a bit much. No, it's a lot. She actually even told, she <laughs> pled not guilty, but then she told the judge, you should put me to death. It would be the best thing for my children. What? Where right. are her children and all of this? I'm not sure where the children ended up. It, I'm sure it was there with her family or I don't know. I don't know. They were very little. I mean, they were both under five. I think they were like age four and two or something. Damn. Yeah. Like, that's just sad. It's very sad. Trying it's very to remember sad. your mother and she's just a murderer. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. So she's, she didn't get the death penalty, though. She just got life in prison. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to say. Okay. I have, I, yeah, we're going to move on. All right, so our next story is definitely a what the fuck. This one is out of Oregon. Um, oh, no. Literally just happened in January of this year. Oh, no. What? Yeah, literally just happened. So in a town outside of Portland, a carjacking happened when a woman went into a meat market for just a few minutes to shop, get a couple of things, right? She didn't expect to be in the like in the store for more than a few minutes. So the car was left running and unlocked. Mm. She turns her back for... A brief moment. She says a second. I'm sure it was more. And she turns around and she sees her car is being driven off. (laughs) She's like, "Uh, excuse me. So panic, you know, ensues as you do when your car is leaving without you and nobody else should be driving it. (laughs) People are moving into action when the car comes back. (laughs) Well, turns out the car thief realized that there was a young child in a car seat in the back. Oh no! And he wanted no part of that. <laughs> so he, he wasn't ready to be a father. No. <laughs> so he actually brings <laughs> brings the car back, and he has the audacity to demand that the mom takes her kid out of the car so he can steal the car again. Reprimands her <laughs> and says that he's going to be calling nine one one because she's careless. Okay, and then. Takes off with the car again. What? <laughs> He's like, you know what? You done fucked up. Right. And I'm leaving. I'm out. <laughs> right. He needed a dramatic leave. I just, I can you imagine like you see your car going off and you know that your child's in that car and you're flipping the fuck out. And then the car makes a U-turn, comes back and the guy rolls down the window. Get your kid out the fucking car. <laughs> Get your kid out the fucking car. I should call the police on your ass. This is endangerment. And yeah. You're like, I should call the police on your ass. What do what? you do? Like, what do you do? <laughs> like, you just stand there like crying. Right? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sir. I'll do better next time. <laughs> I mean, this poor w- woman, like I, yes, you should not have left your child in the car. And she goes on to state, like, I know I screwed up royally. And that could have been 50 million times worse than it yeah. was. Like he could have just taken off with my kid. At least he has some morals, you know? <laughs> I mean, Sure. Yeah, whatever. So police find the car abandoned in Portland. It was a silver Honda Pilot. Um, He took a few things out of the car, but he just left it and abandoned it. 
I don't know what this, I don't know what, the, maybe he needed a ride and he didn't have any money for like Uber or something because he yeah. was leaving Beaverton, which is literally just down the road. I don't know. He he had a job interview to be at. He had to be someplace. But he didn't want to steal the child. <laughs> right. So he just needed to make it to Portland for whatever reason. And he was good. He got what he needed and he left the car. I, they don't know who he is. He's still at large. Um, he's just described as a white male with a long braided, like ponytail. That could be anyone Anybody, in Portland, right? in in Oregon. Dark brown hair, braided ponytail, tall white male. Um, he was wearing a colorful face mask at the time. Again, fucking anybody, literally anybody. Yeah, <laughs> they they're never gonna know who this guy is. There's like, there's no way. Um. I don't know. Beaverton police are asking for help to identify him. And if anybody knows anything, the phone number is 503-629-0111. Call, call and ask questions, I guess. Get information or give information. Imagine being in that lineup. All right, sirs, I'm going to need you to just scream out, yo, bitch, get that child out the car. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> number three, sir. That was him. <laughs> that was him. I recognize that long braided hair anywhere. <laughs> yeah, it just it it killed me because I was like, you you've got nerve. Like you're gonna whip that car back around and be like, uh, can you get your kid out the back seat? No, but, bitch. But can bye. you get the fuck out of my car? <laughs> can you get out of my car? Uh, but I should call the police on you. But go ahead. <laughs> I dare you. I, yeah, I dare you. I, I double dog dare you. Ooh. 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 Now you got to do it. Now you got to do it. All right. So we have to end on a good note. And for this one, we're going to Van Nuys, California, where a homeless man was reunited with his missing service dog. The dog's name was Boots. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm going to cry. Boots the dog. Oh. Um, the dog had been taken under the guise of a woman who offered to like take him and get him a bath and get him cleaned up. That bitch. Man, yeah. Unforgivable. This woman, Nicole Lawrence, uh, she claimed to be a dog groomer. Nicole. I, Nicole. Of course. And. Sorry to any Nicole. <laughs> Sorry. <right. laughs> but of course. But of course. <laughs> uh, one report states that she had taken the dog before and done this, like offered to go and bathe him and, and groom him and then bring him back. And it was fine. So he was like, yeah, I, uh, that's fine. It was New Year's. So he's like, if I'm my shift at. OK, so she was she was shopping at a thrift store. He was working at this local thrift store that supports an animal rescue. And she says, can I you know, can I take him for a doggy spa day? And he's like, sure. Just my shift ends at five. Can you have him back by five? She's like, sure, I can do that there's she doesn't come back she doesn't come back with the dog so he's obviously very upset um this is like this is his anxiety dog like his service dog and he just doesn't he doesn't have a way to try to he's homeless he doesn't have a like a way to try to figure this out so he ends up getting like people at the thrift store end up helping him and they get together like a volunteer group and they make flyers. There's actually like, they end up um, putting together a $10,000 reward and she, you know, at first she gets back to him and she says she lost the dog after having him for an hour at a local, local park. And <laughs> she's like, yeah, I was over here. I was at this park and when people start to question her, they're like, there's no park over in that area. So where the fuck were you really? And she's like, oh, no, no, no. I was at this other park. And these two what? guys came up to me that I thought were going to attack me. And I panicked. So I let dog let the dog leash go. And the dog took off. I kind of doubt that like, Absolutely. behavior of a service dog. Right. I don't think so. No. So she says that she had to hide. And she let the dog go and it was missing. How dare so you? The, yeah, the volunteer group starts putting up these flyers and they actually search the neighborhood where she lives. She doesn't offer help. And oh. <laughs> the volunteer group like comes up with nothing. 
unfortunately. So they decide that they're going to help him file a lawsuit against her. Like, okay, you lost my dog. You need to, you need to cough up. Like you need to do something. She stops all communication. She won't answer her phone. She won't like, she won't say anything. On January 3rd, a neighbor of Nicole's who didn't want to be named because you a snitch. Um, they gave a tip that they saw Nicole walking the dog at night in her neighborhood. So eventually on the 11th, they file this lawsuit and this poor man, he's just, he's so upset and distraught. He doesn't know what to do. He just wants his dog back. Like just give him his fucking dog back, you know? And she's not in communication at all. She won't even respond. So he says, I'm going to sue you for $100,000 in damages. And he files a lawsuit. Um, he alleges breach of contract, fraudulent, misrep- res- fraudulent misrepresentation, theft, negligence, and intentional and negligent infliction of emotional distress. He was like, I'm going to throw the book at you. <laughs> I, I don't even know that I would have come up with all of that. I'm sure he had some very good people helping him get this all together. And they were like, we're going to, we're going to say this and we're going to say this <laughs> and fuck that. We're going to add that too. It, yeah. The whole thing. So Boots was returned ASAP. Good. <laughs> yes. Good. The very next day, um, she didn't want to deal with the legalities of it. And she probably actually didn't think that this guy was actually going to, um, have any recourse? Yeah, you know the what? What resources does he have? He's a homeless man. Well, I I don't know. He, he apparently has something. He figured it the fuck out. Real That's quick. fucked it. Yeah. So how dare you do that to Boots? The dog was was brought back before the police had to get involved, and all was made right. And the dog was reunited with his owner James. Boots and James. Boots and James. It's a black lab too. Aww. I know. Sweet, sweet looking puppy. I probably still would have sued. Bitch. I might have. That's the thing. I don't know. Because it's still emotional distress. Yeah. yeah that's... Like, that's his service dog. He was... And she literally just, like, cut off all contact. Right. Came up with some bullshit story of how I almost got attacked. You're no. right. I literally was, I was waiting for her to say, I almost got raped. Like, I, yeah. you know what I mean? The victim claiming to be a victim. Yeah. Two men almost attacked me. I had to hide. Like, it's understandable why you think you would take the dog because, like, he is homeless. But he has a job. So at least he's getting him, like, food and stuff. The dog is well taken care of. He, yeah. he yeah. gets what he needs to get. And he is a documented, like, uh, service, service compa- dog. Yeah, companion animal, service dog. He gets the care that he needs. So yeah. you have no business interfering. No, None you really didn't. And for you to to say that you're going to do a good thing to help this guy out and then keep his dog, you're just you're a piece of shit. Yeah. That's beyond selfish. That's yeah. like a bitchy move there. It really was for no reason. I wouldn't trust nobody with my dog. That's what I'm saying. I yeah, it's just it's sad. But they were reunited and it was a good thing. So he didn't have to throw the law at her. <laughs> Throw the the law, throw the, the book law at the her. Book law, and he didn't stab yeah. her with a fork. So, and he didn't stab her with a fork. At least he didn't put her in a suitcase and throw her down the stairs. Oh my god! <laughs> I mean, was that in in that was Florida the, too? Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, it was. That was anytime I think of Florida, I think of that story. Yeah, yeah, that was Florida. They were playing hide and seek. Yeah. <laughs> Hide just, in you, the you go hide in the suitcase. <laughs> I'll um, find you in the morning. Yeah. Uh-huh. After I kick you down the stairs. Oh, God. What is wrong with people? <laughs> what is wrong with Get Florida? Get straight. Yeah. All right. So we're done. That was our first what the fuck. We're, we're done. We'll be back next week with more fuckery for you. Don't forget, we turn one year old this weekend, and the info on the episodes and the giveaway will be on all the social medias this week. So until next time, be safe, stay home, mask up, and stay out of the woods. Stay out of the woods. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.